You can read Joe Platania's features on Ed Dixon and Tory Smith all weekend at CSNBaltimore.com for the latest news about the Ravens and the Orioles. Go to CSNBaltimore.com. And we are back on Inside Press Box, presented by Friedmont Mortgage. Now that the NFL lockout has ended, the Ravens have been getting ready for the 2011 season. Here to tell us about the latest Baltimore football news is Joe Platania of Press Box. And Joe, uh, this is like nothing we've ever seen before, isn't it? It's been a rather extraordinary offseason, Stan. Uh, the, other, the last two most recent NFL work stoppages took place in season. Games were lost in 1982. You went from a 16-game season down to nine in 1987. You had 15 games played, but three of them were the replacement weeks. Right. So uh, even, even though these were the replacement games, they counted in the standings. This was different than anything we've seen before or anybody who's covered the National Football League in any city for any length of time is different from what anybody has seen before as far as the off-season lockout and, and all the ancillary uh, legal maneuverings that came with it. And, yeah, and, and, and I don't want to yeah, talk about that yeah, anymore. Of course Let's not. get back on the football field. Uh, were you shocked at the four cuts the Ravens made right out of the gate? Or when you look at it, was that pretty obvious stuff? The McGahee cut did not surprise me. We had a feeling that Willis McGahee with a $6 million base salary coming up that he would go and that they would not try to re-sign him at a lower price. The other ones were a little bit more surprising. Most of all, Todd Heap, uh, the, the leader in touchdowns for this franchise with 41. Uh, Derek Mason, uh, maybe not too much be, uh, because, uh, let's face it, he was a player representative, and I still think some resentment gets harbored on that. I, I, don't, fi- I don't buy that at you, all. You really I, I really don't think Bashotti would do that to him. I think it's more age and real contributions, and I'm not ruling out that Derek could still be back sure. a- at a lower price. Uh, what do you sense, though, that Ozzy's got going? I mean, when you listen to the talk shows, some people are wringing their hands, they're they're scared to death that we're losing these guys, but we all know Ozzy, and Ozzy's got a plan somewhere. Yeah, I think the fans trust Ozzy for the most part, but when big names like this get tampered with, the, the knee-jerk, the superficial reactions among the fans, they're going to come to the surface, especially when we've had very little real football news to talk about. It's all been the legal stuff that we just blew over a minute ago. So when you have names like Heap and Mason and Kelly Gregg, one of the most popular Ravens, one of the most popular Baltimore athletes ever messed with like this, yeah, the reactions are going to go up. All right. What are the key pieces of business? That I, one of the key pieces of business that Ozzy did take care of right away was signing Marshall Yonda. What are the next three key things you think he needs to accomplish? I think to lock down the secondary and see exactly who you're going to have at corner, who you're going to have at safety. A lot of the safeties that have played opposite Ed Reed have been allowed to walk. Uh, getting a backup quarterback would also certainly help, and getting the pass rush. Uh, bolstered a bit. 27 sacks last year, a record low for this franchise. Uh, Pernell McPhee was drafted in the fifth round to help out with that. Uh, They're going to have to find some more sources of some pass rushing help. Terrell Suggs sat out the first practice at training camp with a hamstring, probably precautionary. But again, getting the pass rush in shape is one of those priorities. All right. What about backup quarterback, Joe? And and how good a chance do you think they have at re-signing Mark Bulger? I'll tell you what, if you'd asked me that a couple months ago, I would have said a very slim chance of re-signing Bulger because it looked like he was earmarked for one of uh, three or four teams. But then he goes on an Arizona radio station and says he doesn't want to play there, and then they went and traded for Kevin Cobb anyway. So I think there's a better chance now that Bulger will stay. It's certainly not uh, a a shoe-in right now, but it's a better chance he stays now than there was uh, even a few months ago. Last question I've got for you, and we'll have you on many, many times during the season. Joe Flacco. Were you happy to see him kind of stand up for himself a little bit? I think he's always had that kind of stuff inside him. You see it on the field. You see him yelling. You see him getting on his teammates and on himself. But you hadn't really seen it manifest itself on the practice field or at the Palace at Owings Mills. Palace, not Castle. But uh, that's, uh, that's how he is, and he finally showed it. All right. Joe Platania, as always, you're doing a super job. And you can read all of Joe's stuff at PressBoxOnline.com, the Ravens report. Thanks a lot, Joe. Many have praised the way Ravens cornerback Dominique Foxworth represented the players during the lockout, but does he have reason to fear retribution for his role as a union leader? That's what Joe Platania would probably say, but we asked our Facebook fans what they thought, and Rodney said, just play ball and let the chips fall where they may. 
And we thank you, Rodney. If you want to join in the conversation, visit PressBoxOnline.com and click on the Facebook logo to become a fan of PressBox. When we come back, we'll take you to Ocean City with our Photo of the Week and more. That's Inside Press Box, presented by Friedmont Mortgage. Go to FriedmontMortgage.com for all your mortgage needs. Don't make a 30-year mistake. Go to FriedmontMortgage.com now. <laughs> 